fantastic. So thank you all for coming and visiting with us today. Uh, we have quite a collection in here at the Library of Tarpon. It's pretty amazing because we have found millions of fossils right here in this park area, right in the middle of LA where there's huge buildings, where there are busy streets driving alongside. And in the meantime, we are pulling out Ice Age fossils of animals that were here before, animals like saber-toothed cats and dire wolves and Columbia <laughs> So quite exciting stuff happening here at the Rebrea Antarctic. We are in fact still excavating today, so you will see some of the more active excavation sites. Hopefully we'll have excavators there, not terribly sure though. Um, so let's cross our fingers. But we've been excavating here for a hundred years now. So it has been quite a lot of work. And during those last hundred years, our window into the past has really widened. So on this tour, we're going to kind of see how we've been able to really widen our view of the Ice Age by our excavations that happen here at the La Brea Tarpon. Also, if you have any questions at all during the tour, please feel free to just raise your hand on in the air because I'm sure answers to your questions will probably stick with you a little more than anything else I'm saying, but hopefully not, but most likely, so please ask away. Uh, but to get started, let's go ahead and make our way to the most iconic image, the Colombian mammoths that are potentially stuck in Amazon. Seven. Seven. So, it's pretty awesome. So this is an image that is often replicated in textbooks. This is what most folks associate with the La Brea Tar Pit since it is right in front of our museum. And if you wanted to try to piece together what the Tar Pits were about by looking at this scene, you would probably come to two conclusions. One, that the tar, tar Pits were probably camouflaged to look like water. And then these animals would have sunk down just like that Colombian mammoth is, like a uh, deep bed of quicksand. Like now, both of those conclusions would have been highly inaccurate. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is very deceiving, what we have here. First of all, you know, I, we are deceiving right from the get-go. Our name, the Tar Pits. What we have here, not really tar. What we have here is actually asphalt. And oh. if we all had x-ray vision, over a thousand feet below our feet, we would be able to see a huge field, field, a huge pool of oil, an oil field, that's what I was thinking. So a huge oil field is right below us. And because uh -huh. we are in California, where there's a lot of seismic activity, the earth starts to form these little cracks and fissures in the earth's crust. And that oil has a chance to migrate on up to the surface. And once it gets there, all the lighter elements evaporate. And what you're left with is really sticky, sticky asphalt. So technically, what we have here is asphalt. And that sticky asphalt really would have only gotten about two inches of the animal stuck. They would not have sunk down like a deep bed of quicksand. They would have just gotten stuck on the surface like a fly trap. Oh. So this is a very misconceiving uh, no notion of the La Brea Tar Pit. And for the two biggest reasons on why we have so many fossils here. One, the asphalt, and two, how these animals were getting stuck, which we're going to talk a little bit more at our next stop. But why in the world do we have this? Well, this asphalt was also uh, mined a whole lot in the late 1800s, and this used to be a place where they would mine for the asphalt. A quarry site was then made, and that depression filled in with water, so this is kind of man-made. And those Colombian mammoths, well, the one that's stuck is actually just sitting on a raft, so he's, he's not even really stuck all the way. He's also just kind of a few inches down. But that is what we have here. A little bit deceiving. But we're going to go check out what a more authentic asphalt sea would have looked like. But before we do that, does anyone have any questions on this scene? Yes? What's that, what's that black surface thing? What's that black surface stuff? Oh, that is the asphalt. So we do still have some asphalt in this lake pit. Asphalt and water don't mix so well, so a lot of times it's just kind of sitting right on top of the water. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
came back because I have seen this before, but you guys can get as close as you'd like. Marsha, come here and look. I don't see it. Look at that one over there. that have just emerged within the last few years. The really black part is the freshest asphalt, the part that's going to be a little bit more gooey. And the black cone is just because we are a curious species and people poke around in the asphalt and then wipe it on the cone. So it's not that it like erupts over the cone. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. But it's very cool because it is the same stuff that was happening during the Ice Age that we get to see happening today. So we still get new seepages emerging. And as you can see, I mean, did anybody see any bones sticking out? No. No? Yeah, it's just the black stuff that you're going to see at first. So that's really what brought people to this area. This asphalt was a hot commodity back in the day. Even Native Americans would use it for waterproofing baskets and caulking ships. It's an excellent adhesive, too. You can piece back um, tools and whatnot, so save some labor. And even when the Spaniards came here, and this is where we're getting at with the Librea tar pits. So, you know what? Superficially, this stuff looks exactly like tar. So when the Spaniards explored this area, they were like, it's La Brea, which means the tar in Spanish. So that name just stuck. <laughs> Got a little pun there. Um, so now we are called the Brea Tar Pits, but technically speaking, that is just the, the Tar Tar Pits is what we are named. But that is what brought people here. And as we started to mine through that asphalt and using it for paving roads like in San Francisco, that's when they started to come across bones. So to figure out how they might have viewed these bones, and in fact we do know through journal entries and whatnot, we are going to walk this way. 